Well, so this is what we're going to be working on today. This Yard Machines 21 inch lawnmower with a newer Briggs and Stratton on it. The only thing I've done to this so far is use my little cable tool here. This is a really handy tool. I've done a video on it. I took the uh, blade control cable off, slid this on. So this part of the plastic piece of the cable was inside here up to here, closed it up shot a bunch of WD-40 into here, and it uh, cleared everything up now, so now the cable's working, and I don't have to replace that. Other things I've seen people do with these cables is uh, take them off, put them in a bucket, and just fill it with a little bit of uh, automatic transmission fluid, and just let it soak overnight. Sometimes that'll free them up too. But for however much money I spent on that, which wasn't much, it uh, definitely gets the job done. So this machine needs a bath. I'm gonna do that after I get it running. I checked the oil, the oil in it is good. The people that gave me this machine were the same ones that gave me this rider. And uh, they told me that this was only used a couple times before they put it on the side of their house. And this is what happened to it. They did have a dog. The dog uh, chewed on a couple things here which is uh, pretty standard. The air filter and air filter cover are gone, but I have new ones. So I can only assume the dog got a hold of those. It still has compression. I don't think they were running it like this, but let's go ahead and get started. I don't know if there's, yeah, there's no gas in it at all, so that's good. I checked the oil, the oil is good, it's still clean. Uh, we're gonna have to pull the bag off and undo it up here and put it underneath the handle not a big deal. Overall, I think this machine will end up coming out pretty good. So the bag is the easiest thing to deal with right now, and I'm gonna take it off anyways, so we don't have to worry about it when I'm flipping the mower over and stuff like that. The other thing I forgot to mention is we're gonna have to pull off the recoil and uh, probably throw some WD-40 into the uh, assembly here. The cord is fine, but it's just kind of lazy retracting all the way. So bag, a spider check, there's definitely some webbage in there, yeah, plenty of uh, old grass, so it's going to be an easy fix, all we got to do is just undo the bag, kind of just slide it back. Now all we got to do is just put it back on as it came off. Now one thing that I have uh, started to notice is it didn't used to be that replacing these bags was cost effective. But now in my area, the cost of mowers has gone up so much brand new that it's uh, if a mower can accept a bag and I've got the frame with it, I've actually been looking at buying uh, mower bags, outer new mower bags from Amazon or wherever. Just because of that, it uh, my area boosts the value of a mower pretty significantly, even though a lot of the time mulching is much better for your yard. But people's personal preference around here is to use the bag and that's what's going to make me more money, then that's what I'm going to do. But much better. Ready for reinstallation. When I give the machine a bath, I'm going to give the bag a bath too. So what we're doing now is we're going to take the carburetor off. And the first step we're going to do is pull off what's left of the air box. So on the sides here are both 5 sixteenths. And 
And that's that. So now we have access to the carburetor. So at this point, all we have to do is angle up this clamp here. Pull that back. There's no fuel in the tank, so we don't need to worry about a pair of line pliers. There we go. Carburetor's ready for removal. Very carefully. This one is stuck on there, isn't it? So we've got to remove the automatic choke linkage here. And with that, you can normally have enough slack here to uh, pull it off just like that. And this one, you're just gonna rotate the carburetor just like that. See you guys at the workbench. If somebody's been into this carburetor before, I'll show you guys how I know this. We have the O-ring that's sticking out. So for whatever reason, somebody has decided to uh, take it upon themselves to open it up. It's not likely that was done from the factory. Hopefully that O-ring's okay because, you know what, I might have another one I can use. But we'll, uh, we'll see how bad, bad this one is. Yeah. 9 30 second socket. And you know, I didn't check. Okay, those threads are still good. They've been into this before. There's a chance. Those threads are still good. There's a chance that they damage the threads going back in. People seem to forget that these are plastic carburetors. See what the damage is. Ooh. Yeah, this O ring is pinched. Let's see if I have another one. I sh I'm pretty sure I have a good used one, but yeah, this uh, that's not good. I've never seen one of these this bad before. I might actually have to replace this bowl. Maybe not, but that is some nasty. Yeah, let me see if I have a different bowl. Well, I'm in luck because the horde answered. I have a used carburetor here. And I, you know what, I think this one, yeah, so this one has the threads all ripped out of it. From what I remember, this came off of another machine that I've replaced the carb on for this reason. So I won't feel too guilty with pulling this one apart, robbing parts off of it. This is exactly why I keep old stuff around like this. Because when I need stuff, you know, I've got it. I've got the parts to fix it. And if I remember right, I want to say I replaced this jet or more likely I already serviced it. So we, uh, we might be in, in luck here. Might not have to put that much work into this carb. So the trick that I use to pull these out, you're gonna feel like you're breaking it. I've said this a million times in other videos, but use a pair of channel locks firmly, but not too firmly. Grab the end here. Just rock it out just like that. So this one is not new but I'm pretty sure I serviced it. So we're gonna split this apart here. Yeah, so I did service it. These are clean. They normally like to gum up here. They also like to gum up here. That hole is clean and down here is clean as well. So I did service this carb trying to save it. And uh, that was in one of my past videos. I don't remember which one it was. But yeah, like I said, I always hold on to stuff like this just because it really comes in handy. So we're gonna need that. We've got the good bowl. Let's see what kind of shape this one's in. Now the rest of this carburetor is probably still good. Oh man, this is stuck. Yeah. So this is the worst I've ever seen one of these. It's all clogged up right there. It's clogged up down here. And 
These holes aren't too bad, but they are, it's a little bit of debris in one of them. So this is, uh, this is toast. I'll take off the float pan as well, just to make sure. Because this carburetor is, pull the pan out, float, and needle. Both of these are in good shape. Throw that in there just because I'm going to spray them off too. Inside of the carburetor looks good. Here's a little bit of a trick. So when reinstalling this, you wanna make sure that this O-ring goes into that pocket that's right there. And you also wanna make sure on this particular carb, it's black, but there is a little donut that's in there right in the middle of the carb. You can see it. It's got a hole going through it. That hole allows for this part of the jet to go through. So once you get this installed and you can make sure that it's only, cause it's only gonna go in one way. Remember, O-ring pocket, you stick this back in, and then you can look through here and see the little white nub. There you go, now you can see it. So that's how you know that this is installed correctly. If this does not go in all the way, that means that that little donut that's in there is not, a, not aligned correctly. That hole might be a little bit off. You're not gonna get this in, and what's gonna end up happening is you're just gonna flood out the bowl and the carburetor and your mower's not gonna start grab our bowl and I'm going to spray a little bit of WD-40 on this o-ring so we don't pinch it okay so again these bowls can only go on one way and as we saw with the other one you want to make sure not to pinch that o-ring WD-40 or a little bit of engine oil wipe it around that that'll install it nice and clutch so you want to make sure that you get this down into that pocket right there only going to go on one way. If you try it the other way and try to force it, you're going to break something. Yeah, this, I'll give them this. This one was a little bit tight. Not in a good way. So, put both of the bolts back in. And I tightened everything down nice and carefully. So, this is ready for reinstallation. But now we got to take that recoil off. All right, so now to pull off the recoil, these are pretty easy. I'm not even going to take it off all the way, at least as far as if I can fix this, make it work a little bit better with just a little bit of WD-40. So I just need a 5 16 It looks like at one point we had some widows in here, of course. Off camera, I'm gonna turn on my air compressor and blow all this crap out. I'm gonna wash the outside of this anyways, but I'm not gonna leave this cover off when I wash it. There really isn't a point. So I'm just gonna blow that off. We'll be able to get most of this off of here anyways. But anyways, so it does retract, but it doesn't, it will not retract all the way. It gets kind of hung up. So we're just gonna shoot a little bit of WD-40 down in the spring. I've had to do this several times on older machines. You just do this a little bit. So let's see how that worked out. Perfect. Not binding up anymore at all. Ready for reinstallation. So like I said, I'm gonna turn the air compressor on and blow all this stuff out and I'll be right back. All right, so now we're going to put the carburetor back on. We'll put this one on first. It slides on just like that. Now you have this one. A lot easier with the uh, recoil removed, by the way. I didn't mention it yet, but if you look inside the carburetor, there's a white 
retainer there, and then there's an O-ring right in the middle. You want to make sure that those stay on the carburetor. Sometimes they'll stay on the, th the intake throat right there. If you remove the carb and they stay there, just pull them off and put them back into the carburetor. It's really not a big deal. But that's how you reinstall it. And then now all we have to do is line back on, clamp forward. Before we install the top cover, these are not hard to in install with the top cover on, but I just want to show you guys just so you see everything. You have two nubs here. You have a gasket that's on the carb. You want to make sure that that gasket is seated correctly. It is. And then this is your PCV line. And this goes right back to here. So you just put it on just like that, installed in the back. It's pretty easy. You want to remember that the fine threaded bolts go on the outside, not here. They go here. And 9 30 seconds, go right back in here. These are plastic threads in the carburetor. I know this tool really well. I know the power level based on how hard I squeeze the trigger. If you don't know an impact or how to use one all that well, use a ratchet wrench. I've done this for years like this. I know how to use this thing. I'm not gonna strip the threads out. Just like that. Does not need to go on there super tight. We can reinstall our recoil. 5 16 bolts back in. I have to line it up, I guess. Before I put the new oil in, we'll install the new air filter. So here's the new air filter. By the way, links for all the parts are in the description. It goes on just like that. An OEM Briggs filter box cover. Make sure you buy the correct one for your machine. This one does not have the primer on it, so it does not have the hole in the air box. So this just goes on like this. There we go. So I'll show you guys where the level's at. It's right at the low end, so we'll add a little bit of oil in. I'm not going to need much. OEM oil is 10W30. Make sure you check the level, change it once a year. So I only have a couple ounces left here. So this is probably more than enough to at least get us halfway and then I'll be happy with that. That's good. Dipstick. Yeah, we're almost to the top. I'm happy with that. So I just gotta put some gas in it, see if we can get it to start. Unfortunately, I had to take the carburetor back off and I'm gonna replace the jet. I think this jet that I put in here came out of a 300, uh, 300E, which is the smaller, smaller engine. And that might be why it was surging. Those engines are made to run really lean. Uh, I can't remember like 100% if they use different jets or not, but if they do, I've got a brand new one right here. I'd usually keep these on hand just in case I can't save the one that's in them. And in this case, I should have just replaced it with a brand new one instead of trying to reuse that other one. All done, thrown back in. So I just gotta put the bowl back on and throw her back on the machine. All right, so carburetor's back on, new jets in. I'm gonna check the oil just because we were running it for quite a while. 
oil is fine. It's actually right where it should be. Uh, just give it a pressure wash and that'll be it it's ready for sale i think i am going to pull the blade off and just sharpen it just a little bit just to clean up some of the rust on the edges but i think overall this will make a good lawnmower for somebody hope you guys enjoyed the video stay tuned for more